Carving for me is a very meditative process. In fact, I found that that's where I did most of my prayerful thoughts. You find that there's more to it than just the act of wood carving. Father Tom came to me out of the blue, just asked if he could meet with me after Mass one time and showed me the paintings that are currently up there in the church. And he said, I would really like to commission you to do a carving of St. Francis and St. Clair instead of the paintings that are up there. I just put those on the wall just temporarily to sort of see. It was, there was a representation of Francis and Clair, so there was something there. And they're lovely pieces in themselves, but for what I've what I had hoped for that space, that didn't work. It's an interesting uh, concept. The two images that we currently have on the Reredos of Claire and Francis, which are basically reproductions of frescoes from Assisi, they will be replaced by modern three-dimensional wood-carved uh, figures. And I'm really excited about that. I mean, they're, they're very different from uh, you know, typical, you know, church statuary, which is fine with me. I think Father Tom's vision was to have a three-dimensional presence. I was in Bolivia in uh, 2001. I met these Carmelite sisters, and one of the sisters was a wood carver. And she, first, the first piece she did for me was a statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and they did that for me. So my thought was to replicate the pieces that I had had done of Francis and Claire. Steve did that piece that's in the chapel of St. Joseph. It's such a stunning piece and it, uh, there's so much life to it. So then I thought I would ask him about the possibility of doing a Francis and Claire. And he was taken aback but thrilled with the possibility. Uh, and then really that's how that, the, the project took off. Steve is an incredibly gifted artist in wood. There's a gracefulness to what he does. The process is the idea first, and you spend a lot of time just sitting quietly thinking about where you're gonna go. Um, and then you start doing a lot of different sketches. So when I make my sketches, they're very, almost like coloring book outlines. So that I know, I know what the outline of the shape should look like, but in my head I can see, I can see the form. I see everything three-dimensional. I respected him as an artist and wanted him to do what, what I trusted he could do, uh, what would represent Francis and Claire for us. When I was doing the research and I found different sketches and images, um, I, uh, again, I took a composite of different things. Um, so the, the drawings were original. And then once you get the sketch, then you figure out dimensions. Uh, you get into the nuts and bolts of how much wood do you need, how big does it need to be, what type of wood as far as color-wise that you want to go with. And then you go into the roughing out process and then the actual carving. Um, and it goes from uh, the gross shapes and the bigger shapes and the movements and then you get into the detailed shapes. Once the carving is finished, then you probably have almost an equal amount of time of the finishing process. Wood, wood has life to it, and it's a, there's a softness to it. Um, and with the right sculptor, the right carver, uh, there's a flow to it also. So you, you have body, you have softness, you have earth. I think of wood then as part of, you know, the gift of our sister mother earth. How someone like Steve or any artist or instrument maker can take that resource that we have been given and can turn it into an object of even greater beauty. The process of wood carving is a little different than clay sculpture where you can add on and if you make a mistake you can correct it pretty easily. With wood once you once you make the cut it's almost it's no turning back. When you look at the carvings, the posture of the carvings is 
to reach out to the community that are coming up to the altar. They embrace the Eucharistic space and, and the tabernacle. I think the, the two requirements that uh, Father Tom wanted for when people come up to the altar was that he wanted St. Francis to be holding the cup and he wanted St. Clair to be holding the bread. I think the image of uh, Francis with the cup and Clair with the bread were images I, I really hoped to capture. One, it's certainly in terms of Clare from the monastery, caring for the hungry, caring for the poor who would come to the door. Well, there weren't any pictures with that. So that was an original concept of mine. And then I had to ask Father if he wanted the stigmata. And so I had to research the stigmata a little bit. And I didn't realize that according to history, St. Francis is the first human recorded to have received the stigma. In the, in the stories of Francis and the experience of Francis, um, it's noted that he received the stigma. And this really was to mark his uh, conformity to Christ. And that was a very important, that's a very important image in terms of how we talk about Francis and how we talk about Franciscan life. But it's absolutely rooted in his desire to be conformed to Christ. I carved the stigmata by first getting the location and then I tried a bunch of different things on a blank piece of wood. And so what I, I found was that if I just uh, carved it in very shallow and then I wood burned the color, then it looked a lot like some of the images that I saw on the computer of the various types of stigmata that have been recorded over the years. In my workshop here, I had to always remember that they're going to be viewed from 10 feet above the ground and about 20 feet back. And the sense of size was something that Steve and I talked about. And he, you know, he was very good. He measured things out. He sort of looked at it and had the, the idea for what proportions should be. And even doing the, the uh, base for those pieces that would fit in uh, with um, the design that's on the, on the piece itself. And so I purposely made the eyes almost closed because that, that the little slit with the eyes down, it, it gives it the impression that both Claire and Francis are looking down at you. And then I tilted Francis one way and Claire the other way because that's the way they're gonna be interacting with each other up on the wall. A, a wonderful thing is that they, they do relate to each other St. Patrick's St. Anthony Church is so beautiful. The stained glass that's in there and the old architecture, it, it's, that's kind of humbling for me to know that my artwork is gonna be up there. You know, there's always beauty. And I, and I think, uh, you know, beauty that's in all of creation and beauty is so much part of the Franciscan vision and life. I, I think that Steve finds a great deal of spiritual uh, meaning in the work that he does. And so he talked about, really this was a prayer experience for him throughout the pandemic. These two carvings have had a big effect on me. I think it would be really something if, if people could just maybe find some form of uh, prayerful connection. I would like it to be where people are sitting in mass and maybe they get lost in it for a little while.